Here is a 1950 Philco AM FM radio in a wooden cabinet. Uh, my pastor's son picked this up at an estate sale and he asked me to fix it for him if possible. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Let it warm up a little bit. I'll pause the camera while that's taking place. Okay, we're on FM. We have a little reception, but very weak and distorted. Right out from under my it's a little better, but it should be a lot better. Okay, let's see about AM. Obviously this band selector is very dirty. Well, AM appears to be dead. Okay, let's open this joker up and see what we can do to make it behave. Okay, here's the chassis removed from the cabinet. And one thing I don't like about Philco radios from the from this era is the way they have the loop antenna designed. You can see it's stapled around the cabinet. And these wires are soldered to the chassis, which are very fragile wires, I might add. It's really not a good idea to try to work on one of these chassis without first unsoldering the wires and getting everything out of the way, because otherwise you may break the loop antenna leads for testing. You can just connect the loop to the chassis with alligator clip leads. Okay, the first thing I want to do is clean the switches and controls with this contact cleaner. We, we already determined the band switch was dirty. Okay, I've cleaned the tube sockets, the volume control, and the band selector switch. We'll now test FM and see if its performance has improved any. Well, not really. Well, our controls may not be as intermittent, but we still have a ways to go. Okay, the first thing I'd like to do is check the power supply to make sure it's outputting the proper voltage. And as you can see, this uses a selenium rectifier. And one of the symptoms of a bad selenium rectifier is weak output voltage. And I want to check that now and make sure that's with intolerance. Okay, we have 112 volts, 113 volts on the uh, selenium rectifier. That might be a little bit low. Think about this. I can tell you that the alignment's off because we're tuned to 101.3, but according to the dial, it's coming in at around 100. So we'll have to align the FM oscillator. Well, I will have to say this set's pretty sensitive because we're tuned to an oldie station about 90 miles away with just a clip lead on the FM antenna. So that's not bad. Okay, back to the power supply. The schematic calls for 135 volts on the cathode of the selenium rectifier. Let's see what we have here. About 111 volts. And actually, I've been monitoring this voltage for the five or ten minutes this set's been on, and it, it, it keeps dropping the longer the set warms up. And I suspect that's due to this selenium rectifier, so let's go ahead and replace that with a silicon rectifier diode and an appropriate dropping resistor. Since the silicon diode has less voltage drop across it than the selenium does, if we were to use a diode without the dropping resistor, our B plus voltage might be too high. Generally, we consider the, the Type 1N4007 as a suitable rectifier for this purpose. 
However, I have something here a little bit heavier, a 1000 PRV 2.5 amp. I have several packs of these, so we might as well put them to good use. I'll have to look it up, but I think a 4007 is a 1 amp diode, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, just to show you what we're doing, our AC comes in here. Our dropping resistor will connect between this point and the anode band of the diode, and then the cathode band of the diode, which is denoted by the stripe here, connects to the first filter as can be seen on the schematic here. Now we'll just experiment with several different values of resistors until we get the one that gives us close to the uh, schematic specified B plus voltage. And that resistor value is usually between somewhere between 22 and 82 ohms depending on the set that you're using it in. Okay, I've settled on a 27 ohm resistor. That gives us 133 volts. That's close enough to the schematics 135 volts. They didn't want to know the difference, and it's been on for several minutes. And our B plus is staying at 133 volts. It's not dropping down like it did with the old selenium rectifier after it warmed up. And I suspect after I replace some, some of the old capacitors that the B plus voltage will probably come up another few volts. So we're just going to stick with the 27 ohm resistor and call it good. And there we go. Selenium rectifier problem taken care of. And now we need to deal with all of these, all of these wax paper capacitors that need to be replaced. Okay, the capacitor replacement is coming along nicely, and I'm about to replace the multi-section electrolytic can capacitor. Uh, even though there was no hum, I decided just to do a spot check of the capacitor in the cathode bypass section for the output tube, which is rated at 25 microfarad. It only reads something like 3 microfarad. And I learned a long time ago, the hard way, on these multi-section capacitors that if one section fails, it's usually not too long before the other ones go south. I remember a couple of television sets that I fixed that I got lazy and replaced only the bad section of the capacitor, and in both cases, within two weeks, the TVs came back with the other section that failed. So we're just going to go ahead and replace this whole thing, and I will analyze the high voltage sections of this capacitor just to see what kind of shape they're currently in. Okay, I want to show you something regarding resistors. This is the resistor going to the filter capacitor off of the rectifier diode. Schematic calls for 150 ohm, 1 watt. This is 130 ohm. I don't know whether somebody had replaced this or whether this is a production change, but it really doesn't matter. Well, mounting the new filter capacitors the way I'm mounting them, this resistor was a little bit too big to fit where I needed it to fit. So I had these brand new 150 ohm resistors. Now looking at that, that doesn't look over a half watt resistor, judging by its physical size. But according to the, the specifications on these resistors, they are two watt resistors. I guess we'll know if that's really true or not when, when we apply power to the radio and the resistor burns up. Okay, there we go. Two out of the four capacitors replaced. It's amazing how much smaller these components have gotten, which is helpful to me. That means we can stuff these capacitors under the chassis and they not be in the way of anything. Okay, here we are with the capacitors and a few new resistors installed on terminal strips. I went with 200 volt capacitors instead of the original 150 volt capacitors because when you turn the set on, there's an initial surge voltage close to 180 volts until the tubes warm up and then the voltage drops back down to around 135. Well, Capacitors, filter capacitors generally have a surge voltage rating, which means they can take a momentary over voltage without damage. But I thought it thought we'd better be safe and sorry, so I went ahead and installed 200 volt capacitors. 
and surprisingly the original filter capacitor can tested okay except for the open cathode bypass section which is a low voltage section it's generally the high voltage sections that open up okay let's fire it up and make sure we have everything wired correctly if we have everything wired correctly it should play if we don't well it might well I must have done something right it's playing but we still have things to do to improve the situation Okay, here we are on AM. It's doing reasonably well. You fathers and you mothers be good. And FM. Need to hook the antenna back up, but I had to adjust the FM oscillator slug to get the stations to come in on the right point on the dial. Okay, here we are. The 1950 Philco back together on the AM band. from it, but never Seems to be pretty sensitive on the high end of the dial, but I believe this tinning condenser has a short. And it dies on the low end, but I played around with it and really didn't have any luck clearing that short, but that's okay, because all he wants is the local stations anyway. In fact, I doubt he'll even be listening to AM on this set. Now we're on FM. Going to be nationally Oregon. Ten Eastern tonight, Hannity Fox. So just to recap, what I did was replace the selenium rectifier because it was failing after it warmed up. I replaced a bunch of leaky capacitors, both of paper and electrolytic. Well, actually, the, le the electrolytic was in pretty good shape, but I went ahead and replaced it anyway because the cathode bypass section of the can was open. I replaced the dial bulb Support and I touched NPR up the alignment a little bit. Stations. And, and it seems to be working fairly well now. I think he'll be happy. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.